Hello, welcome again to another session of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel coming to you from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City, home of the uh, nationally renowned Stevenson Cancer Center. Our case today uh, comes from the realms of uh, surgical pathology uh, and specifically uh, gynecologic pathology. Um, it's that of a 63 year old woman who had some postmenopausal bleeding and that was found to be related to an endometrial carcinoma. Her uterus was enlarged um, and the tumor was grade two. And so therefore she was felt to be in at least high intermediate risk and would warrant having staging lymphadenectomies. These were performed at the time of uh, hysterectomy. And in those nodes, we have the unique and unusual findings of uh, today's uh, topic for discussion. Here we see at low magnification, a representative section from these lymph nodes from one side of her pelvic lymph node dissection. And as we can appreciate, even at this very low magnification, the architecture of the lymph node is distorted by some areas of altered staining uh, within this lymph node that looks a little bit more pink uh, than what we would uh, expect to see. As we look at this, we see that it's uh, not particularly a gland forming uh, neoplasm as we might expect, but in fact is composed of sort of a fascicular uh, growth pattern, uh, maybe somewhat spindle shaped cells that are fairly eosinophilic. Uh, as we look at these at high magnification, uh, we can see that the nuclei are quite uniform and uh, rounded uh, when seen in cross-suction and somewhat cigar-shaped uh, when we look at them uh, on more longitudinal uh, sections. The cytoplasm has had this uh, ropey pink appearance with a little bit of uh, vacuolization that would be characteristic of uh, smooth muscle type cells. Um, as we uh, look at the other deposits in this uh, lesion as well, we see that there are some of these nests uh, out along a little septi within the uh, parenchyma and uh, here forming a somewhat more stellate mass at the center. And then another subcapsular area with again, very nice fasciculated pattern growth uh, extending along the subcapsular sinus and even out into the uh, adnexal fat. Well, this raises the question of uh, what can cause non-malignant deposits in a lymphadenectomy specimen that has been removed uh, looking for uh, cancer and uh, with the desire to stage for cancer. Well, of course, the most common thing uh, in the pelvic lymph nodes is endosalpingiosis, little deposits of uh, uh, tubal type epithelium uh, with no significant atypia. Uh, capsular nevi have also been described, little deposits of nevomelanocytes in the capsule uh, that can mimic uh, metastatic melanoma. And of course, foreign body reaction has been described uh, quite thoroughly, particularly in the prostatectomy uh, and related lymphadenectomy uh, literature. Uh, patients who've had a prior joint resection uh, and then undergo a subsequent lymph node dissection fright quite frequently will have some significant foreign body type reaction that can look uh, like a metastatic deposit at low magnification. And then of course, granulomata for other causes, both infectious as well as uh, non-neoplastic like sarcoma, sar sarcoid and so forth uh, as well. And then this last category of the much less common lesions is where our current uh, case uh, falls today. As we uh, think about um, disorders that uh, can uh, cause uh, um, this, uh, the entity benign metastasizing leiomyoma is really quite unusual. Uh, there's relatively few uh, reports of this in the literature, 
Uh, but essentially, this has been nicely defined as benign smooth muscle tumor or tumorlets uh, that have been found incidentally, uh, sometimes clinically, in extra uterine sites at, in the setting of a current or a prior history of uterine leiomyomata. Um, most commonly, this is uh, detected in the lung um, and uh, so forth, but many other sites have been described, uh, central nervous system, breast, pleura, spinal column, appendix, uh, vessels, skeletal muscle, and of course, lymph nodes and retroperitoneal sites. Typically, these are uh, averaging about eight to nine years post hysterectomy. And we might imagine in our particular case that it certainly could have taken that long for these subcapsular deposits to become clinically evident um, if they had not been incidentally discovered. These are clonal neoplasms, uh, but they are cytologically and uh, biologically benign, uh, although their very complex molecular genetics uh, has as yet to, to yield any defining uh, specific pathogenetic uh, uh, lesion or etiology. Um, so uh, in summary then, our case today uh, is an endometrial adenocarcinoma FIGO grade two with the inner one half of the myometrium being invaded and multiple lyomyomata in the uterine corpus. But the very interesting finding of uh, lymph nodes showing benign metastasizing lyomyomatous tumorlets. Uh, these were present in both the pelvic lymph nodes uh, pelvic lymph nodes and in one uh, paraaortic uh, lymph node that was also removed uh, to stage this patient's tumor. Well, we hope that you've enjoyed that. We'd love to hear your comments. Please like and comment below with uh, some of the unexpected findings you've come across in lymphadenectomy specimens. And of course, please subscribe so that you won't miss future releases on our ch channel. We always, of course, welcome your suggestions, feedback, uh, cases you'd like to see discussed, entities that uh, challenge and perplex you. Uh, so until next time, thank you so much for joining us.